Yo, what's going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. And before we begin today's video, a shout out to my patrons. You guys are amazing. And before we actually get into the build, I have some clips for you guys. So roll the clips. Yo, welcome back guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the clips as much as I enjoyed making them. So this is one of the dirtiest DK builds I've come across. Yes, there are other builds out there like this, but nothing performs overall better than this. It does great in BGs as you saw. 1v1 duels. The kid I was doing was no joke, one of the best mad DKs out there, and he still couldn't handle the build and also open world. So let's get right into the build, fellas. Now I've tried to optimize this and gold everything out so you guys don't have to. Now I am a dark elf. Uh, because I am a dark elf, we do have to change up the build a little bit. Ideally, you want to be Breton. So we're running the Atronach Munda Stone, Bewitch Sugar Skulls. Here is the character sheet, a recovery uh, around 1,000. This goes up like 1,200, uh, 1,300 continuous attack and uh, your, your potion buff. More than enough sustain to get you through pretty much any situation. Character sheet looks kind of underwhelming, I would say. We do have a lot of crit resist, but that's not how this build functions at all. Don't worry, we're about to pump the fuck out of this damage. So we got the race out of the way, just basic character sheet. I'll just take a look at the basic back bar character sheet. Here's everything, you know, it's completely unbuffed. Well, not completely unbuffed, the res resistance buff, but you guys get it. So I'm just gonna jump right into the bread and butter of the build. You may notice we're running a lightning staff and for good reason. So the patch came out yesterday and uh, it put a few sets into the game. Plague Breaker, uh, Rothgar, and my favorite, is dark convergence guys if you do not know what this set does it is the most broken set i ever seen and i love it as a solo player nothing is more frustrating like getting shit on by zergs and teabagged well this stops that at least this gives you a fighting chance so on tooltip already everything completely unbuffed it's a 20k tooltip if you guys are unfamiliar how it works dark convergence you drop and and any ground aoe it puts this, uh, this Dark Nova here on the ground, it pulls people in, it stuns them, it snares them, and god forbid if you're in the center of it, it's damn near going to one-shot you by itself. Now you guys saw it was 20k on tooltip, so we're going to buff that up here in just a moment. So in open world, it actually goes up to a 32k tooltip on this build. It's pretty fucking insane. Now you can push this much higher, obviously with glass can like bombing builds, you know, with a mag crow, stamp, fuck any other build. But this build is not made for like a glass cannon, a zerg one hit combo. I will be coming out with a build just for that. But this one is an all around build. It performs exceptionally well in every area of PVP in ESO. And if you want an all overall meta build, this is it. This build does everything. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy fully buffed up here. So let's get our burning spell we've procced, which I did not mention. Apologies for that. So on tooltip, guys, we have this guy at 30 or well, 29k. And again, with continuous attack, this do, does go up to over 32k with everything golded out. Incredible <laughs> amount of damage. And this amplifies for 10%. Everyone caught in this, guys. Imagine there's another 10 people. That's another 100%. Okay, I, I don't even have to blow you away with what is possible with this set 
and let's say you combine something like uh, plague splitter or plague uh, plague break again this is another aoe kind of spammy spell i'm going to make a build for this but this is not the build today today we're going over a more rounded build so we're running dark convergence on our back bar only and we proc this by running a spell from the dk tree i'll go over that in just a second but just a heads up uh, it is called eruption i found this to be the best and i'll explain why the other sets we're running we're running a, a lightning charged or oh, nern hone uh, excuse me a lightning nern hone staff with a charge glyph uh, that's just because we need to proc a minor invulnerability reason we're run, running a lightning staff over infernal because we do have a lot of aoe on this build so the proc set procs from aoe uh, abilities such as uh, the lightning staff um, the lightning staff also procs your talons um, it also buffs up your leap your leap on tooltip with everything fully buffed is uh, <laughs> just as incredible to be honest um, it's 25k tooltip just by a leap alone and we have the ample amount of enough to sustain to get us by so this is what running on the front bar now if you don't have access to burning spell weed, don't worry you can run spinners uh, something uh, of that nature and spinners works just as well but if you have one of the other process and serials like uh, plague uh, plague spreader or whatever it's called that's gonna work just as well my next build is actually going to be involving that so if you have access to any of those by all means so the next set we're running is blood spawn now blood spawn is here to help us with our sustain as well as our tank ability now there are a lot of changes a lot of the passes so people are just generally uh, more tanky there's a lot more damage mitigation this patch but i feel that i need a little bit more than what i was getting plus again blood spawn helps you a lot with your sustain with your battle roar passive the last step we're running is a trainee just a one piece now notice i have everything in pin i feel the in pin is going to be a godsend this patch there's gonna be a lot of bursty boy builds because the way the meta has shifted everyone is much more tanky so in order to compensate you have to have these really hard hitting bursty builds and i'm just going to tell you guys in pin is going to be the way to go in pin or if you're running a lot of heavy reinforce on your big pieces and then for the jewelry i do have malcolm's banner brutality we have an infused burning spell we staff again if you're running breton which is best in slot you can put a spell damage glyph on this but since i'm running dark elf i have to put a cost reduction glyph to compensate for the passive differential and then another burning spell weave uh, also infused spell damage you want the most spell damage you can possibly get because that buffs the damage of your proc sets as well as your ultimate ability and then malakas ban and brutality if you want to re-roll this into infuse you can do that as well but i just use this ring across most of my builds i have so i just keep it arcane for the time being uh, one more thing to note i do have a restoration staff an eye staff or sword and board is a-okay to use as well i'm rocking defending a lot of people are running uh, powered I, I i just strongly disagree with that um, i have a weapon damage gly glyph on the back bar just so i can have more healing and more damage so you want to lie attack on your back bar and then when you go in for your burst combo swap to your front bar and you know all, all that good stuff carries over running uh four lights uh two heavy one medium right now i feel that's kind of the best um you can possibly instead of this one piece training and heavy you could swap this to medium or light for even more spell damage a little bit more sustain if you put it in light but that's entirely up to you guys so let's go over the skills here real quick try to keep this as short as possible i know i've rambled a lot so we're using engulfing flames uh this goes up to uh an extra 10 percent on pretty much everyone we're attacking fossilize this is one of the best cc's in the game rain talons is set up for our combo our combo is amazing and plus this helps us proc power lash to keep our power lashes and healing over time going again i'm running power lash there are glass cannon builds or more bursty boy builds to where you can use flames of oblivion and molten whip and get your seething fury procs and really going for those one hit combos but again this build is tailored toward an all-around build not one specific you know hey let's kill this one guy and then die right afterwards right so we also have burning embers this is a hella hard hitting dot uh this is our hill as well a very cheap hill if you remember to recast it ferocious leap on the front bar now there's all kinds of different ults you can do you can't you don't necessarily have to use ferocious leap i tried standard it was amazing with this set because dark convergence pulls everything into one single area i the storm is great 
It's phenomenal. If you really wanted to, you could put on Grothgar instead of Bloodspawn if you think you're tanky enough. Run Eye of the Storm and chase people around and just absolutely marinate them in your dot damage. Whatever suits your fancy, guys. As a solo player, though, I need a little bit more of a defensive slash offensive ult, so this is what I'm opting to go for. On the back bar, running Rapid Regeneration, one of the best haunts in the game, if not the best. Coagulating Blood is our oh shit button. Running Dragonfire Scale, uh, you don't have to run wings, guys. I myself find I'm against a lot of snipe spammers and sorks, and this just helps me to get all the damage. Plus, it does hellacious damage, and you can really turn around fights if the enemy is caught off guard while this is up. We have volatile armor for our resistances buff, and then we have eruption here. I'm sure. <laughs> A lot of you guys are not using this, uh, or even know this ability exists. It's a morph of Ash Cloud, so it does a little bit of damage immediately. Plus, it slows them, guys. I want you to take a look at this. So, Eruption, the reason I'm going for this one, it impairs movement speed by 70%. And then you look at our Dark Convergence, and it <laughs> impairs their movement speed by 60%. So, effectively, this is a 100% snare between these two abilities so the only way to get out of the aoe of dark convergence is for you to double roll dodge now there's some advanced mechanics you can get into with dark convergence which i will cover in the next video and also how to counter dark convergence you know including shuffle and cp you know things of that nature but for the sakes of this video i'm just gonna kind of keep it short and sweet oh almost i uh, deleted that so the last skill we have is temporal guard now you can run uh, any really back bar ult. Um, temporal guard's good. You can run a uh, magma armor is really good. The the poison one where it makes you ignore spell and physical resistance. Uh, you can run that as well. Alternatives to your back bar to proc dark convergence instead of running eruption. I just po point out in stream today that you can actually go down here to the support skill line and toss on like lingering flame. Not only do you get major protection while this is slotted, which is amazing. But this can also be used to proc Dark Convergence, and it reveals everyone in the area. You know, all the Nightblades, you know, if you guys know me in the channel, I'm always vision about Nightblades. So this is amazing to have. So not only do you have minor protection from your Psychic Order skill line ult, but you also have major protection just from having Lingering Flames slotted. So on your back bar, you automatically have 15% mitigation, which is huge. So if you want to go into more of a tanky nature, you can slot Lingering Flame instead of uh, Ash Cloud. So that's entirely up to you guys. Uh, the potions we're using, we're just using the Alliance Spell Drop Pots because we do need a source of uh, major sorcery since we can't really fit it anywhere in our bar. If you can find a place to put it, guys, and by all means run Tripods or the Heroism Pots, which are insanely expensive for the DK, but if you have access to them, you know, to each their own. That's just a really expensive habit to form. We'll go into the Champion Tree here. So pretty much all I'm going to do is go over the, the passes I'm using. I'm using unassailable. Uh, this is reduces your AOE damage. I don't have to explain to you why this is so important. Okay, it, you should know. Uh, running deadly aim uh, increases your damage done with single target attacks. Our heals are fine, so I'm completely leaving healing out of the equation. Uh, this helps our whips a little bit, uh, burning embers. Uh, just more or less, this is only here to help with our spammable, to be honest. And then we have Biting Ores. This increases our area of effect damage. And of course, with Dark Convergence and Talons and the initial hits of Engulfing Flames and Leap, you know, all this gets bolstered by that. And the Mastered Arms increases direct damage. Pretty much everything that you do at some point is directly related to, to, to direct damage. So this is always a good CP to have. Now, if you feel like you need more tank, you can kind of spec out. Or if you need more heals, you can kind of go over here. But I have never felt the need where I'm like, oh shit, my healing sucks. Like, oh shit, I'm not tanky enough. Usually if I die, it's, it's because there's like 30 people on me. So we're going to the red tree. And the red tree did uh, have a lot of changes here. Now, uh, we do have balanced vitality. Gives you a little bit extra health. Since we're running a lot of light armor, we do need enough health to compensate for that. Um, running fortified as well. Again, since we're running light armor, we need as much armor as possible. Uh, peace of mind, or, uh, this increases your uh, uh, recoveries by 200. You're pretty much always affected by a, uh, a crowd control uh, effect, or, or excuse me, uh, increases your recovery when you're crowd control immune per stage. This helps a lot of the time because you're only CC for like a half a second and then the the entire time you're CC immune, uh, you have this 200 passive recovery. Now they did move 
the rejuvenation CP, they nerfed this into the ground. Now you guys need to go into a survivor spite and spec into sustained by suffering. Increases your magicka stamina and health recovery by 30 per stage. So effectively 150 at max level while under the effects of a negative effect, which is <laughs> all the time. Let's be real, fellas. And I only have like 980 CP. So wherever you guys can go with the rest of the CP, uh, that's entirely up to you. And then when it comes to the green tree here, the only thing that's really worth having is a war mount and then a gifted rider. So that about does it for the build, guys. I think I covered pretty much everything, kind of explained the basics. Again, I will go into a more advanced guide on this build and how it works. And I will also have two other builds to go over, one using a, a plate spreader, plate breaker, whatever it is. It's the new serial set. So if you guys want to be first on the scene for that, please hit the notification icon, You know the, the little bell guy. Currently 70 two percent 78 percent but i think it's 78 percent of you guys are not currently subscribed so please do your boy horcrux a favor if you enjoy the content and like the videos just please give me a subscribe as well so with all that being said fellas thank you for sitting through this entire video making it to the end i will catch you guys in the next one Peace.